If you've been scrolling on TikTok, then you've seen a lot of people stream from their PCs, playing a lot of different games like GTA, Minecraft, or whatever. Today, I'll show you how you can stream from your PC in this ultimate TikTok streaming guide. So let's get right into it and let me show you step by step. Let's go. The first things first, what you will need to know is that you need to have at least a thousand followers to be able to stream on TikTok. That is to stream on your phone. But for some reason, if you want to stream on your PC, you will need to have at least 3000 followers. I know it's a weird thing, but for some reason, they decided to do it that way. So if you don't have access to TikTok Live Studio, which is the software we're going to be using today, that might be the reason why. If you do have at least 3000 followers and you don't have access to TikTok Live Studio, try to go live on your phone at least like one or two times. See if that works. It's a weird fix, but some people reported that it works that way. So try it out. And if it does work, even better. Now let's go on this website that I'm going to link down in the description below. This is the TikTok Live Studio download page. If you do have access to it, you will be able to open it and see this screen right here. Keep in mind that this works only uh, on 64 bit Windows 10 or newer. So if you do have like Windows 7 or 8, I'm not sure why you have that now. But if you do, it won't work. It only works on Windows 10 or newer. So keep that in mind. Just click on free download for Windows. It will download the file. And once you do download it, I'm going to show you how to install it and set it up. So for the installer, it's pretty basic. You just click next install and then it will give you this, you know, completing the TikTok Live Studio setup. You just run the file. So it will run the actual program right there. And now you will get this screen right here. So we need to log into our TikTok, obviously, to be able to stream, you know, to your TikTok. So you can log in with any of these ways. I'll just use the QR code, scan it with my phone and I'll get in. So I logged in using the QR code. It's going to log in right here. And now you will get this screen over here. So it does say for experienced streamers, import from another tool or go live now. We won't do that. We'll do the beginner guide. We'll go one by one. So we click on setup now. And now we get these uh, the microphone and camera setup. So you choose your default microphone, whatever your mic is. Mine is chat mic. And then you choose your camera, which is, again, whatever mic you have or whatever camera you have, choose the camera right there. Doesn't matter. Click next. And now it will do this speed test. I've seen a lot of people comment on my previous videos that their speed test is not accurate, which it's not, by the way. This like uh, TikTok Live Studio speed test is nowhere accurate at all. If you want the real speed test, just go to speedtest.net, do the speed test right there, see how fast your internet is, and that way you can use that info right there. So this speed test that it does, it shows my upload as 150, which is definitely not correct. I'm using gigabit internet. So I have around 500, 600 upload. This is like nothing. I'll show you the real speed test right now and how you can see how fast your internet is. So as you can see, this is the real speed test. This is my download right here, 950 ish. And then my upload is going to be around 500 or so. So that is the real speed test. If you want to go do the speed test yourself, the link will be down in the description. We will use this data to actually change our settings into the TikTok Live Studio so you get the best looking stream. So as you can see, 935 download with 320 uh, upload. That is way more than you will need uh, for streaming on any platform. And then if we go back to the TikTok Live Studio, we will see the suggested video quality. We do not need to use any of this. We will change all these settings. So just choose whatever suggested, click OK. And then it will be doing this quality property setup, whatever. It will show your specs. It will show your download and upload. And then you just ignore all of these settings because we will change them manually. Click on next. And then again, you can change the scenes. Make sure to use the compatibility mode because this is actually really, really nice. You will be able to uh, have the scenes both in portrait and landscape mode, which is amazing. So no matter who, if somebody's watching on PC, they'll be able to see the landscape mode. And if somebody's watching on the phone, they'll be able to see it in the portrait mode. So you have both worlds together. You don't need to stream just portrait or just landscape. Pretty sick. And then on the teams you can change to whatever team. I don't really care. I can keep it default. Click finish. And that is it. It says, welcome. Uh, you know, hi there. Do you want to change some stuff? No, not now. And it does this like default overlay, whatever. We're going to ignore all of that. We will change it all once we change the actual settings. So if we want to change the settings, we click on this cogwheel in the bottom and it will give us all these settings that we that they suggested, right? So you go over here into the video quality and you change this to at least 720p or 720p plus. You don't want to go lower than that because it will look very blurry and you don't want to go higher than that because it is an overkill. People are watching on their phones. 
they won't really notice the difference between a 720p or 1080p. You're just going to be using more uh, bandwidth, which is going to lag your PC or your internet. So I feel like 1080p for the phone streams is just overkill. So just use 720p or 720p+. plus. Now for the resolution, this is the 720p resolution. For FPS, we want to change it to 60 if you're gaming and you can change it to 30 if you are just doing some static stuff and you're not moving too much. One more thing we will be changing is the video bitrate. This, I usually recommend at least 4000 if you have a decent internet. But how do you choose the video bitrate uh, properly? What does that even mean? So if you go back to the speed test that we've done, you can see the upload number, right? The upload number says around 340 or 400 for me. If we open up our calculator, we can do whatever the number on the upload says divided by eight. So 400 for me, for example, or whatever is for you divided by eight is 50 upload 50 megabytes. This big number is 50, is 400 megabits, which is completely different. We can completely ignore that. Focus on this number right here. Now, we have the video bitrate as well, which says 4,000. What does that mean? This basically means four uploads. So you have 50, four is way more than you need. Uh, if you have, for example, only four upload or only 10 upload, then use about 80% of your upload speed for streaming and keep the other 20% for gaming or YouTube videos or whatever so it doesn't crash the stream, right? So 80% for your stream, 20% or anything else. So 50 is basically 50,000 bit rate uh, that we can use and we are, we're only using 4,000. So whatever this number says, use about 80% of that. So 4,000 is way more than enough. I can even run 10,000 if I want on this internet that I have, but for 720p, around 3,000 or 4,000 is basically all you need. This will make the stream look pretty good. If you want to go more than that, you can, obviously, if you have good internet, but more than that is just completely overkill. Like I said, people are watching on their phone. They won't really notice the difference. So around 4,000 audio bitrate, we can change this to 256. So we get the best quality audio. If your internet is bad, you can keep it on 128 or 192. But if you uh, are not struggling with anything, go with 256. Encoder is uh, something that we definitely need to change. Maybe it will be defaulting to the soft codecs, which absolutely suck. Do not use these. Make sure to focus on the hard codecs, and I'm going to explain what those mean. So you have the Intel, which is your CPU uh, codec, and you have your GPU codec. If you have the same CPU and GPU as me, if you have Intel, it will say Intel. If you have AMD, it will say AMD. And if you have AMD GPU, it will say AMD over here. And if you have NVIDIA GPU, it will say NVIDIA. I know it's a bit complex, but it's actually pretty simple. So we want to use our GPU codec, which is the NVENC from NVIDIA. That is basically the best one and the most efficient one for both power, FPS, and just overall resources. So if you have the GPU like NVIDIA 20 series and above, you'll be able to use the NVIDIA encoder without any issues. If you have a bit of an older GPU, you can use your CPU encoder as well. So play around with those, see what works. If you're dropping frames, if you're not dropping frames, but I definitely recommend using your GPU as your encoder right here. That will be the best for you and you will use the least amount of resources. Or for the GPU encoder, we definitely want to use 264 and not 265 because 265 is just overkill. We don't need that again for the mobile stream. Way too overkill. Focus on H264. So click that. Boom. Now we're good. And then we can change our stream latency. If you want to have like a specific delay on your stream, if you're doing like a tournament, you want to have a 30 second delay. That's whatever you want to do. That's just custom. And then coded compatibility mode. We don't want to change anything over here. Ignore that. And that is it for the stream quality. Record. You can change your record uh, saved path, for example, over here and your format over here as well. Hotkeys. If you want to have a specific star stream and uh, end stream hotkeys, you can put them over here. Everything else, I don't think we need to change or play around at all. So now that we have these main settings over here, main sources and uh, scenes, what do we do to make the stream look good? So first, we're going to go delete everything we have over here, and we're going to add our custom sources and scenes. So choose each source and scene, right click, delete, or just press delete on your keyboard and delete absolutely everything you have over here. So delete, delete, delete 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 and delete now that we have everything deleted now this is all empty for both portrait and landscape we want to go to our portrait because we are in compatibility it doesn't matter what you're adding 
click on add source and we want to add our camera source so we click on the camera right here we click on uh, next or add but make sure to have sync to landscape scene as well so it adds it both to landscape as well add and now we choose our webcam right here it looks a bit weird because it's like squished but that's totally fine it will look normal on stream just change the resolution so it will go back to the 16 by 9. if you have a 4 by 3 webcam then you're gonna choose the 4 by 3 resolution so this is fine everything is good fps 60 all these settings are fine you can play around with them if your webcam looks a bit different uh, click on add source and now we have this source right over here we can keep our webcam on top and we want to add another source that is our gameplay uh, for right now i'm gonna use the display capture but usually you will need to use the game capture to you know capture the game and show it but right now i'm actually gonna use the game capture even though it's not gonna show anything if you want to add a game capture you will need to have the game open and then choose it right over here because I don't have it, I'm going to go again and I'm just going to add a display capture so you can see my whole display. I'm going to use my primary display. I'm going to capture the cursor as well. And we are going to ignore this warning. And now we have our display capture, aka game capture. We can make it bigger so it fits the whole screen. I'll just do this and I'm going to make it a little bit more bigger. Just line it up. This is not perfect, but you get the point. This is going to be the game. This is my webcam. If you want to add some text or, you know, whatever else, you can play around with all of these widgets uh, and add, for example, alerts, goals, text, images, whatever else under these sources. If you want to add some more extreme stuff, like I did in my previous videos, you can check out my Thickfinity guides for some crazy... Uh, goals and, and timers and all of that stuff that will be up in the top right corner of the video make sure to click that so you can check more of those videos for our landscape scene we want to change that as well so it looks you know nice we can put our webcam like for example on the side over here in the middle and then have our display capture or game capture you know full screen and that's basically it all these other stuff is like for more advanced users but this is how our stream is going to look like it looks Pretty normal to me, you know, pretty basic, but that's what we want. And then if you want to go live, you will need to go in this live settings uh, over here in this like pen tool, click on it, and then you can change your cover of your stream to auto screenshot. So it like automatically captures uh, your face or, you know, your stream every like, let's say 30 seconds or a minute. So if people scroll on the PC tab, for TikTok live streamers, they will be able to see what's happening right there. If you want to have like a custom thumbnail, like on YouTube, you can upload a cover image uh, over here. So play around with that. If you scroll down to the bottom, you see the information, you have the topic, you can choose whatever topic you're doing. If we're doing gaming or, you know, chat and interview or food or whatever else, if we choose gaming, we can also choose what game we're playing, let's say Fortnite. Uh, so it says, you know, Fortnite over here, gaming Fortnite title. You can change your title to whatever you want, you know, playing Fortnite. I don't know. It doesn't matter. You can play around with that. And then about me, you can put whatever you want in the about me if you click on edit. And if we scroll down even more, you will see your settings one more time. And it says your video settings are too high. Try selecting automatic. That's totally fine. It's not too high. You know, TikTok thinks I don't have a good enough internet for this. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Ignore this. Scroll down, sub only chat, sub only live. You do not need those. That's for more, you know, advanced users and people that actually have subscribers because you don't, you don't activate this. And then you can choose if your stream is going to be for people that are above 18 years old, right over here, click on save. And now if we click go live, we will be able to go live normally and you will be able to stream on TikTok on both portrait and landscape as well well and that's basically it that's how you can stream on tiktok using your pc if this video helped you you can drop the like it would mean the world and if you don't already know i do stream on twitch three days a week link is down in the description below a lot of people have complained that tiktok live studio is lagging and it's using a lot of resources which it is it's actually a very poorly made program but i made a different video that can use obs virtual camera to copy the screen from obs to tiktok and you can make the stream way nicer and it's going to use way less resources. So if you haven't seen that, make sure to check it out right there and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out and have a good one. Bye-bye.